Welcome back to eLiterate TV. I'm Michael Feldstein, and I'm here with Allison Littlejohn of Glasgow Caledonia University. Welcome, Allison. Hi. So you're doing some research on using MOOCs to support professional learning. That's correct. What does that mean? What are you doing? Well, professional learning is really important because right now, professions are changing faster than they ever have in humankind. So if we think about it, people's professional practice is changing, work rules are changing, technologies are supporting this and sometimes even defining it. So this is where MOOCs come in. MOOCs are very relevant. But at the same time, professional learning or professional development hasn't kept pace with the change. So professional development is still pretty much based on everyone going through and achieving a certain degree of competence. But what MOOCs offer is the opportunity for people to learn in a continual way and learn in a bespoke way. So people can go into MOOC, they can learn in that MOOC and then they can take what they learn and translate it into their professional practice so they can change their practice. So in this way, MOOCs offer a lot of promise for professional learning. So when we hear the term lifelong learning a lot, what I hear you saying is that lifelong learning needs to also be continuous learning if it's going to integrate in the workplace. Is that Absolutely, because people's roles are changing, their practices are changing, everyone has to keep up to date, and so we continually have to learn. So what are you looking to learn about how MOOCs can help with this problem? Well, professionals nowadays, they have to bring in formal and non-formal learning, weave them together and achieve their learning goals that will help them with their job. So that means that the learner really has to plan their learning pathway and take control rather than relying so much on the instructor. So one aspect that's important is self-regulation. How do people regulate their own learning? How do they set their learning goals? How do they achieve those goals? Do they self-reflect? There's a lot of literature on self-regulation. So we're basing our research on that literature and we're mapping what people actually do with what's known in the literature. And when you say you're mapping what they do, how are you going to go about finding out how these students are self-regulating in the MOOCs? Okay, so we're approaching this from, from two sides. Firstly, the learner is right in the center. And we're looking at learner behaviors. And we're doing that by, firstly, we send out a questionnaire where we can actually score somebody's self-regulated learning ability. So we can then take a profile of people, we can have a group of people who are highly self-regulated, a group of people who are not so highly self-regulated. We get in touch with them, we ask them quite detailed questions about how they go about planning, instantiating, reflecting on their learning. So essentially we're getting a very detailed map of how people who are highly self-regulated and not so self-regulated go about their learning in a MOOC. And that means we can compare these two groups. So as you think about that project and you also think about the other MOOC grantees that you've in your cohort that you've been learning about and just think about MOOCs in general. Um, what do you hope we'll know about MOOCs a year from now that we don't know today? I hope that we know about how people learn in MOOCs because MOOCs have been designed as, as courses but actually they offer a lot more. You have massive numbers of people. You have the opportunity for those people to, to bring in their own knowledge. It's completely different from the traditional face-to-face -face courses. Therefore, the environment design could be very different. But we don't really know what to design or how these courses can really change learning until we understand how people learn in the MOOCs. So clearly we have a lot to learn and uh, hopefully the research that you're doing will teach us some important things about lifelong learning in the next year to come. Alison Littlejohn, thank you for your time. It's a pleasure.